legendary train travels from Halifax to Toronto. The ocean. In Halifax, everything centers around the harbor. In the second largest natural harbor in the world, gigantic cruise ships anchor next to torpedo boats. And in the Maritime Museum, there is a reminder of the sinking of the Titanic. At noon each day, a single cannon shot is fired from the citadel. With its striking 1950s exterior, the ocean is a captivating sight. Although the train's interior has only recently been restored, it evokes great nostalgia. The journey passes through the outlying districts of Halifax that has a population of 320,000. Now this erstwhile fishing village is a pulsating harbour city. ocean train travels past green meadows and large swamps and through an impressive landscape of unspoilt nature. Much of the time, the sun accompanies the legendary train as it journeys toward the approaching darkness of night. The adventure can begin. At night, French Quebec is an intriguing sight. The city landmark towers above Ville de Quebec, the famous hotel Chateau Frontenac, an elegant construction. High above, a broad wooden walkway leads to a variety of interesting sites and old houses. In the citadel, even visitors seem to walk as loftily as once did its soldiers. The star-shaped fortress was said to be completely impregnable. And the regimental mascot is always on duty and accompanies each changing of the guards. The fortress, that is located 100 meters above the St. Lawrence River, is still the headquarters of the 22nd Canadian Regiment. Its 198 cannon are reminders of more unsettled times. The Tour de Calèche leads through the large green parks of the city. Here one can relax and take a leisurely picnic. This the city wall and the neighbouring area are reminiscent of bygone times.
various restored historical buildings give a sense of what it must have been like to live in this fortified complex of days gone by. Former soldiers and officers' quarters give an insight into military life during numerous conflicts. In the picturesque old town that is also known as Hauteville is the oldest shopping street in Canada. The art of the Inuits is omnipresent. They are the descendants of the country's original inhabitants. A number of museums and exhibitions contain the fascinating work of these people. Today, around 26,000 Inuits live in this region. light enters the remarkable windows of St. Andrew Church. Its sacred interior is beautifully illuminated. Mighty stands La Cathedral Notre Dame. The interior of this large cathedral is dominated by a host of beautiful paintings and gilded works of art. cut through the world-famous buildings, some of which have stood here for more than 400 years. And the Musée de Four features scenes of the city's dramatic history and numerous battles for Quebec. railway, the funicular, travels down onto the riverbanks and the small and enchanting Cartier Petit Champlain. The visitor frequently encounters people dressed in historical costumes, a popular tourist attraction. The restored church of Notre Dame des Victoires is located on Place Royale. It's a reminder of two victories against the British and also the courage of this nation of seafarers. The square was named Royal due to a bust of Ludwig XIV. It gives the square its royal touch. This city, with its charming inhabitants and well-known hospitality, is a wonderful bend of both old and new. It's difficult to leave, but it's time to resume the journey on the ocean. For 24 hours a day, the large station hall, with its dark wooden wainscoting and convivial lighting, has a regal ambience. In the morning, heavy rain. But armed with a hot cup of coffee in the relaxing atmosphere of the ocean, the weather isn't half as bad as it seems. After a short journey, 
the train reaches the island city located on the St. Lawrence River, Montreal. This pulsating metropolis has two faces, a French way of life and towering American architecture. The impressive domed basilica of St. Joseph's Oratory is one of the most important pilgrim destinations in the world and is dedicated to the patron saint of Canada. In the old quarter of Vieux Montreal, it's good to take a leisurely stroll through this area steeped in history. An area that extends from the huge building complexes of the harbour area to the city hall at the Place Royale. Along with various other buildings in this district, the former residence of Sir Etienne Cartier is well worth a visit. The city's oldest chapel, Chapel Notre Dame de Bon Secours, contains an intriguing number of model ships, donated by various seamen. From the church tower, there's a wonderful view across the rooftops of the charming old town and the former market halls known as Marché Bon Secours. At the Place de Uville, the pace is slow and easy. The Basilica of Notre Dame is the city's oldest church. Inside, there's a small and quite outstanding image of the Virgin Mary. A drawn carriage known as a calèche is a relaxing way to take in the sights. The journey passes through the streets of the old town. In recent years, the huge harbour of Vieux-Port has been renovated on a large scale and is now a popular meeting place and entertainment complex. A boat tour can be fun. The bateau mouche passes the Cité de Arve Habitat with its 354 concrete blocks, each one of which supports several apartments. Constructed of aluminium, the biosphere was built in 1967. Le Tour Olympique is an impressive contemporary building. Its narrow tower is 190 meters tall, and the view across Montreal is breathtaking. The top of the tower can be reached very quickly via an external elevator. The arena contains 70,000 seats and is used for a variety of concerts and sports events. The unique museum known as the Biodome features a tropical forest, plus the underwater world of the St. Lawrence River.
Displays in the insectarium contain thousands of both living and dead insects and a colorful array of butterflies. The captivating Jardin de Chine is a perfect replica of a garden that dates back to China's remarkable Ming Dynasty. The small colorful houses on the Square Saint Louis are mainly inhabited by artists, authors and poets. The modern dynamic pulse of this city is truly fascinating. The old Christchurch Cathedral successfully blends peace and calm alongside the striking appearance of modern skyscrapers. The members of the congregation leased the ground beneath the cathedral and thus a fantastic subterranean shopping paradise was born. Numerous moving staircases connect the floors of the underground city. These elegant boutiques, shops and restaurants are ideal for a weatherproof shopping spree. From Mount Royal, that even though it's only 234 meters high, is known as the mountain, there's a splendid view of the entire area. And at night, the city is very much alive. A kaleidoscope of advertising signs and glittering facades create an incredible illuminated atmosphere. Whilst other Canadian cities sleep, here the party is only just beginning. European charm and the American way of life, a successful blend of well-being. The ocean makes its way through the night to the terminal of Toronto. The Canadian Railway has been, and always will be, an extremely popular means of transport. On it, hundreds of kilometers can be traveled with safety and comfort. The proud and mighty towers of the Royal York exude the grandeur of a first-class hotel. It's conveniently connected to the station by a tunnel. The marvelous old traditional station hotels, with all their original atmosphere and charm, are thankfully still in evidence today. This lobby boasts colossal dark wainscotings and stately chandeliers. Toronto is also called New York without any mistakes. And in around this pulsating commercial metropolis is a population of 3.8 million. In downtown is the city's most impressive skyscraper. It contains the headquarters of several well-known banks and insurance companies.
The nostalgic flat iron building and the shining towers of the Royal Bank Plaza are a harmonious blend of both old and new. It's very easy to find one's way around this city. The small rectangular centre of the old town was built according to a chessboard-like ground plan. Toronto is also known for its art and culture. Galleries, museums and theatres play an important part in the life of this exciting metropolis. The modern concrete building of New City Hall was built right next door to the Neo-Roman Old City Hall. Toronto mixes tranquility and calm with the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Here, both live side by side. Within the huge shopping palaces, as well as in the bright subterranean underground city, it's possible to shop here 24-7. In 1793, the fortified complex of Old Fort York was built to protect the first settlers. From here, there's a view of the CN Tower. At 533 meters, this amazing landmark is the tallest building in the world and has been designed to withstand the most powerful winds. There's a good view across the city from an increasingly dizzy height. The ascent continues up to the Skypod. With its futuristic dome, the Sky Dome is a technical masterpiece. State-of-the-art computers operate its extendable roof. Inside, hotel apartments have a direct view into the arena. Thus, the hotel's guests have a perfect view of the sports action down below. A journey on the double-decker bus through the streets of Toronto is a good way to see many of its sights. As it travels through the city, its upper deck provides a practical way of taking photos from an otherwise unseen perspective. Casa Loma is reminiscent of the medieval fortress. The incredible contrast to be found in this city are truly amazing. The Parliament of Ontario Province is located in Queen's Park. The fascinating tour on the double-decker bus ends at Toronto's harbour front. romantic trip across eastern Canada reaches its conclusion with a final view across the tranquil bay of Lake Ontario.
The journey on the ocean has united the past with the future, endless landscapes and frenetic commercial centers, untouched wilderness and contemporary life. <laughs>